Can you comment on the pro-Palestinian protests that are happening on university campuses in the United States? Well, uh, okay, these protests have been uh, going on predominantly at so-called Ivy League universities, including, I think, Columbia, MIT, Harvard, Morehouse, Berkeley, and uh, Emerson. And they seem to be spreading, even internationally, to places like the UK and Germany. In the US, I think more than 550 students have been arrested so far, and I don't know how many have been uh, suspended. They started with suspensions and then they moved on to arrest. It's quite dramatic. And of course, they're protesting against American support for the genocide in Gaza. Really, the American genocide in Gaza that's being carried out by the Jewish brigade uh, of American imperialism, American colonialism. It's an American genocide more than anything else. Of course, it is a genocide for which the entire collective West uh, is culpable. But America is the key enabler, the key sponsor, the defender, the protector, and the funder, and the armor, uh, and in many ways, the architect of the genocide in Gaza. And uh, the university students, uh, university students of the most prestigious and the most expensive universities in the country, are being cracked down upon for voicing their opposition to it, their opposition to genocide, for wanting to stop it, for wanting to disavow and disassociate themselves and their uh, educational institutions from the crimes that their country is perpetuating in Palestine. Now these are by no means uh, the first or the only protests against the genocide. Protests have been ongoing since October. Massive protests. Tens of thousands of people protesting in the United States, protesting across Europe, even in countries uh, in Europe with severely tyrannical governments like the UK and Germany and France, for example, where the consequences of protests can be violent and draconian. These are some of the most oppressive and repressive governments in the world if you remove all of the self-praise and the propaganda that they spew about themselves and about freedom and civil rights and so on. No, the UK, France, and Germany are a Western axis against freedom. And if you don't know that, I mean, if you live there and you don't know that, uh, then you just haven't tested it. The only way that you can live in any of those countries, uh, and increasingly in the U.S., and not know that they are despotic tyrannies is if you have been so numbed and so brainwashed that you hold no opinion in your head that wasn't put there by the state, that wasn't injected into your lifeless brain by the mainstream media. So you never had anything to protest about. You never questioned your government. You never uh, challenged the official narratives about anything. That's the only way that you can't know what I'm talking about. And that makes you even more repressed and more oppressed and more tyrannized than the people who are getting beaten and who are getting detained uh, for objecting to their government's brutality. You're even more of a victim. You're even more abused than those protesters who are getting clubbed upside the head and getting choked and getting abused by the security forces. Because your government, your rulers, your ruling class has never let you live a day in your life without telling you what to think and sabotaging your ability to think for yourself. You're the most abused in your society. What they did to you uh, is worse than beating. It's worse than detention. It's worse than imprisonment. At least those protesters uh, who are getting beaten and arrested by the police, at least their minds are free. At least they have their own thoughts in their head. But you, uh, your leaders, have made you a zombie that thinks that the right thing, the moral thing, is whatever power chooses to do. Your government has put you into a moral coma. You're morally comatose. They put you under an induced coma to where you can't see uh, that them sponsoring the wanton murder of 34,000 people, some 24,000 innocent women and children, you can't see uh, that there's anything wrong with that. You feel nothing. Or even worse, you think it's the right thing. You think it's the moral thing. You think that what your government is doing is good uh, by sanctioning indiscriminate slaughter. You think that's fine. Why, they've robbed you of your very humanity. And that's the only reason that you can believe that you live in a free society. That's the only reason that you can believe that you live in a society with civil rights and liberty and free speech and all of those other wonderful things that you never had and never will have. The only freedom that you have in those countries is the freedom to agree with power. You're free to submit uh, to the powers that be. But yes, there have been protests all along. Marches, demonstrations, boycotts, everything. All along. And now those protests uh, have reached the Ivy League. They've reached the institutions of the ruling class, the soil from which the ruling class grow their next generation of leaders. The protests have spread from the street 
to the elite. And now the sons and daughters of the owners, the sons and daughters of the controllers of global financialized capital, the uh, OCGFC juniors, are getting knocked upside their heads. They're getting thrown on the ground. They're getting tackled by the uniformed goons whose job it is to serve and protect their class, whose job it is uh, to serve and protect their parents. You know that's what the police are for. That's what the National Guard is supposed to do. That's their job. They're the ones who are nothing but the, the, the bodyguards and the enforcers of the elite. They're supposed to protect and serve these young people. They're supposed to look the other way uh, when the sons and daughters of the rich break the law. They're supposed to only use their batons and their tasers to keep the lower class in line, to keep the poor and the marginalized in the margins. They're not supposed to be throwing around the kids of the elites. They're not supposed to be throwing around the sons and daughters of the OCGFC. This is a total system breakdown. Do you understand that, it, at, at, that, that some cop on the Harvard campus probably just zip-tied the future president of the United States? A future secretary of state, future diplomat, future dignitary, and so on? Can you imagine? Your system is having a complete meltdown. I mean, these aren't uh, BLM protests. This isn't Antifa. No. These aren't normal working class people. These aren't minorities. Those campuses are the creme de la creme of American society. You don't get into the Ivy League because you're smarter than everyone else. No, that's not how you get in those schools. You get into those schools because uh, of your connections, because of your family ties, because of your proximity to power. And those police uh, are going after those students the same way that some IDF Neanderthal goes after a Palestinian child. It's stunning. They're body slamming professors. America's most prestigious campuses have become occupied territories. And you can see, if you watch the videos, you can see just how much the uh, police, the American police and security forces have cooperation and collaboration with the Israeli police and security forces. There's no difference. They act the same. They trained each other. They act the same way. You know, Netanyahu said uh, that what's happening on America's campuses uh, reminds him of Nazi Germany. And he's right. He's right. He just, it's just not the way he meant it. The security forces are acting just like the Nazis, cracking down on dissent, cracking down on the conscience uh, of their own nation. That's just what they're doing. They're throttling the moral conscience of America. You know how there's that poem uh, about how, uh, about the Nazis, how they came after the intellectuals and I said nothing, they came after the Jews and I said nothing, and now they come after me? Well, America, they came for the Palestinians, and you said nothing. They came for the protesters in the streets, and you said nothing. And now they're coming for your own uh, best and brightest, your own Ivy League bourgeois ruling class children. I told you before, America's empire is going to die in the rubble of Gaza, and that's just what's happening. Oh, this is a, this is a serious problem for you. Those students uh, are the talent pool for your future. They're the ones that you're going to uh, hand over the reins of power to. You train them up for that. And you can tell that just by uh, how different their protests are. They're not rioting. They're not burning down police stations. They're not looting a CVS. They're not making crazy demands like people who have no experience dealing with politics or with the authorities and so on. No. They're demanding very reasonable demands. They're demanding divestment uh, by their universities from Israel. Very simple. They're protesting in an organized and a disciplined way. They won't even let just anybody talk to the media. They have their own media team, you see? These kids are from the professional class. They probably got a workflow chart and a human resources uh, department for the protesters. These young people uh, have been primed to take over the system. And instead of taking over the system, they're taking the system down. I'm telling you, you're in a crisis right now. America's in a crisis. You know, I, I saw uh, some politicians said that there appears to be a foreign element behind what's going on uh, on the universities. You know, like a, a foreign power that it, that's uh, instigating and agitating. And yes, there is. And we all know which foreign power that is. We all know which foreign country is stoking this crisis. And it sure isn't Russia and it sure isn't China. No. Well, if you wondered why those kids want their schools uh, to divest from Israel, just look at how their schools are treating them because they dared to ask for that. Those universities are doing the bidding of Israel, not the bidding of China or the bidding of Russia. They're not even doing the bidding of uh, those kids' parents and those kids' families. And your, uh, your police are doing the same. So yes, there is a foreign power behind all this, and it's precisely that foreign power 
that the students want their schools to extricate themselves from, and it's very obvious to everyone why. Couldn't be more obvious. It's as obvious as a baton cracked on the side of your head. Look, on, on these campuses, like in Harvard and the Ivy League campuses and so on, you had demonstrations against Russia and in favor of uh, Ukraine. You had that at the Ivy League, uh, Ivy League schools. You had protests against China over Xinjiang and so on. No zip ties, no arrests, no 500, 550 kids going to jail. No. But the moment they start demanding that their school stop partnering with Israel over a genocide and all hell breaks loose. There's no mystery about what's, uh, what foreign country is driving that. I mean, you're having protests at MIT. Do you have any idea what MIT is? MIT is basically a wing of the Pentagon. It's an incubator for future policymakers at the State Department. But you know, the Zionists should have seen this coming. I said it before, they should have seen the, the, the writing on the wall in 2020, when this same generation was going around knocking down statues of slave owners and colonizers. They let you know what they, uh, how they feel about that, what their stance is about that. They want nothing to do with colonization. They want to disavow that history. So if they want to distance themselves uh, and disown colonization in their history, what makes you think uh, that they'd be fine with being associated with colonization that's going on today? Because that's all Zionism is. It's nothing but Western colonization, and it always has been. The, this generation didn't have a chance to try to oppose slavery and colonization a century ago or two centuries ago. So they just pulled down all the icons of slavery and colonization, everything that they could find. They tore it down. But right now, today, they have the opportunity to actively oppose uh, and fight against present-day colonization in Palestine, and that's what they're doing. I mean, seriously, how could you not see this coming? Were they subtle in 2020? Of course this generation is going to fight you. Of course they're going to reject Zionism. Of course they're going to oppose uh, genocidal colonization. This is their chance. This is their chance to prove that their anger and their guilt about America's crimes in the past that their uh, anger was genuine. This is their chance to prove to you, to themselves and to the world, uh, that they meant it in 2020 when they knocked down all those statues. This is their chance to manifest uh, the virtue that they were signaling four years ago, and that's what they're doing. And the knee-jerk reaction of your so-called civilization, your so-called culture, that's so addicted to colonization and so addicted to brutality, their knee-jerk reflex response is to turn vicious, to turn ugly, to turn oppressive and violent against anyone who's trying to cure them of that addiction. But this time, you're attacking your own future leaders. You're attacking your own precious babies of the elite. And this is just how wild and incurable your addiction is. This is just how morally bankrupt and how corrupt your so-called society, your so-called civilization is. You're willing to sacrifice your own young your own heirs to power, your own successors to the imperial throne because of your insatiable thirst for the blood of the colonized. You're too drunk on the blood of your victims to know uh, that you are too drunk, too drunk to lead anymore. These students are trying to tell you uh, friends don't let friends commit genocide, but then you just turn your blind fury against them. I'm telling you, your power structure is cannibalistic. We're witnessing an American meltdown in real time. It's a tectonic shift. The epicenter is in Gaza, but the shock waves are shaking the foundation of American power. Every time the Israelis launch a missile, I'm telling you, it lands in the United States. And if things keep going the way they're going, before too long, there isn't going to be anything left standing in that country.